This is the Battle of Weapons Factory on Legendary Difficulty. This is the Battle of Harper's Ferry. And if you've never been there, I highly recommend a trip to Harper's Ferry. It's a neat little place. And in the fall, it is just a very, very beautiful place to be. So I'm going to put the sniper on the right side. Um, you've all seen this approach uh, a bunch of times, and you've also done it a bunch of times. So I'm going to try to keep my infantry out of sight. This is my first time playing this on Legendary Difficulty. I suspect these guys have great visibility. So my thought is if I can, I want to get as close to, of course I want to get into the woods, get into the wood line, have the enemy attack me, supported by 24 pound howitzers and 20 pound parrots. This is not a lot of time in this battle. So again, under the clock, and I want to get as many kills as absolutely possible in the time that I have. So, and I, I know this is a glitchy um, area for melee, so might not be able to get any captures here. And and it, but if possible, my goal is to get a, get captures, but not not to charge into a big pile of infantry. Okay, my 24-pound howitzers. I was hoping to get them as close as possible before the battle started, but not get detected, so I've been detected. Okay, that's completely horrible. So I hit pause, have everybody run in front of the 24-pound howitzers, and have the 24-pound howitzers fall back. So I have some of these guys on run, and some of the guys are not. So my thought is that the guy, some of these guys on run, I want to get them into the... Yeah, and I completely lost track of these two uh, artillery batteries. 20-pound Parrot and 24-pound Howitzer. Um, so right now I'm really screwing up. The 20-pound Parrot and the 24-pound Howitzer, I set them to go where they are. Uh, and then I lost track of them. So now I'm taking a moment, getting my force organized, and getting people where I want them. Push the detached skirmishers forward into his detached skirmishers. Um, and grab this wood line, get into cover as quickly as possible. And then the, the infantry behind that is not on run. I want them to get there fresh. Because if my units in the front are tired, I can have them fall back and recover some condition, and then uh, we go on. But they were able to push the line forward and get um, basically save my artillery uh, because I screwed up. Okay, he has a ton of artillery over here. And my sniper is now detected. And he's turning around to shoot at my sniper, so I'm having my sniper fall back. Okay, the only thing I get a shot on now is his infantry. So my sniper is going to pick on his infantry. Which, I can live with that. Okay, I'm in cover. And we're just going to take cheap shots at his infantry. Okay, his infantry is at 1,800 each. So we can't just charge out there. We want to degrade his infantry with lots of... Uh, Fire from cover. My 24-pound howitzers need to get... He has this one guy in the woods. Uh, two 24-pound howitzers and a 20-pound parrot should be able to convince him to fall back. Then secure the wood line and then fire from the, uh, the great cover of this wood line. That's my plan. The bad news is this is actually low ground. He's standing on a hill, firing downhill. Even though I'm in cover, uh, that is not good. So I need this uh, artillery to start doing a good job on this guy. Can't afford to be on run. Okay, I'd like to get the detached skirmishers behind his infantry unit. That would make him rout. But they also have to fire at his artillery because, you know, his artillery is incredibly good. 
He's firing canister, but my units are all in good cover. Okay, we finally got him to route. The 24-pound howitzers did what 24-pound howitzers do. Now he has a unit in the open, and even though I've taken some losses, my my guys are in the woods. This is very good. Now it's just a question of how effectively do we do this. So one of my units is sort of to the rear. His job is to extend the flank to the right. Detached skirmishers are also going to do that too. I want his infantry to be, uh, to see a line of units to my right, his left. Um, I don't want him to turn and face the rest of my line. I want the rest of my line to do other things. Like you can see my two infantry units on the left and some detached skirmishers. We're going to kill that sniper and then we're going to push his right flank, which is mostly artillery, detached skirmishers and artillery, uh, and cav, uh, back. So now there's no reason to press forward fast because my artillery needs to get up and it has to move through the woods to do that. So get some shots on his exposed artillery, but we're going to stay in cover. Perfect. Now we need to get the artillery up. And my sniper is just racking up kills. And his artillery, even though he can see me, his artillery should ignore me. Because his artillery should have something more important to focus on. Which is the infantry and sniper or skirmishers that are um, going to be firing right into him. Okay, so his skirmisher unit came up and took a shot on my sniper. That that was genius. I I didn't think his artillery would bother me, but his sniper did exactly his his sniper did exactly the right thing, which was come over and take a shot. He's coming back to take another shot. Um, yeah, I need to get out of there. So I'm going to target him. Yeah, just get out of there. That is not good. So my guys are in good position. And, um... Yeah, and as usual, where's the artillery? Where's the artillery? Where's the artillery? Always the big thing. Push the artillery forward. When the artillery gets close, um, he's going to be in absolutely a completely lost position. So I'm thinking... That my snipers can go over and get a shot on his whatever he has hiding in the far upper right corner. But I don't, I don't see anything. I know something's over there, but I just don't see it. So yeah, detached skirmishers advancing on his artillery. This is just perfect. Infantry in support. Especially for when his cav comes up. My sniper just got a shot on his cav. Yeah, this, this is just perfect. The 24-pound howitzers are now up. Yeah, his artillery on the right is now completely doomed. Having my infantry fall back because I'd like for his uh, snipers and cav to advance and just take shots. Yeah, he's going to move uphill, and now he's going to take infantry fire, and it's going to be devastating. This is just about perfect. Could not be more pleased. Yeah, if we can kill his commander, that would even be better. Okay, he looks like he's going to start drifting to the north. I do not want him to escape to the north. So I don't want to put pressure on him. Uh, right now, I have the high ground, I have artillery, I'm moving my 24-pound howitzers up. But I want to cut off this uh, this thing he's doing. Uh, so I'm targeting his unit, that's uh, his infantry unit that's to the far north. Get him to route south. So my sniper focused on him. And now I need to get a couple of infantry to block this um, escape route. I want to push him into a pocket in the right where he is. I want him to stay there. And the guys who are in the north, the force I have up there should be able to kill all of those guys. So, and the sniper can always pitch in on that too. But the sniper can just sit right where he is and get a ton of kills right now. 
He has an artillery that is a concern. But if I'm going to bag the lot of them in there, 48 minutes, uh, I have to just take the shots from his artillery. So yeah, 227 is the size of that artillery unit. I'm just having my artillery focus on his artillery. We've got to kill it. 44 minutes, not a lot of time. A lot of people to kill and not much time to do it in. I'm glad to see my commander is where he needs to be. That's good. Okay, this is a really, really bad place. Um, it, this is one of the places where uh, units get into melee in, in a huge um, distance away from you, right at that water's edge. Um, th this whole area is really bad for melee. So what I want to do is stay away from him and keep him bunched up and keep him in a pocket. So I'm moving up my artillery um, as close as possible. I'm moving up... Um, some detached skirmishers to convince him to not go to the north. I do not want him to go to the north. Uh, I want to keep pushing him back to the south. Uh, and the two detached skirmishers will do that because he'll calculate that there's a lot of infantry there. I can't go that way. Um, meanwhile, he has these two detached skirmishers and a cav unit minimum over on the uh, in the northern part. I just need to keep pushing those guys back. We have 34 minutes on the clock. So yeah, keep pushing, keep pushing, but don't push him in such a weird way that he decides to flee to the north. So I need him to flee. Oh, and now my units are going to bounce around, as they do. An endless problem. Okay, so I'm going to have one unit uh, slide north. His units are starting to shatter. That's good. Making sure all my guys can fire. Because if he takes hits, he will... Yeah, and my units are shuffling around again. I can't have that. They can't be shuffling around. This is... If I want to get them all, this needs to go better than that. So they need to fire, not shuffle. So what I decided to do is to put these guys on hold. So no more shuffling. Get on hold and fire. Fire into this. So the 24-pound howitzers are up. Should fire into the guy who is completely to the front. Um, and drive them back. The snipers are getting flanking fire. Fired whoever is the closest. Drive him back. Now he's down to one unit. Try to get the capture. Twenty-one minutes to go. Okay, did not get the capture. So everybody can at least walk over there. We don't have a lot of time, but they can at least build up condition. Uh, we're going to get... Okay, he I, he had a unit hidden over there, a detached skirmisher. I need to get the unit that's only 94 out of there. But I have two infantry. He has two units. I have two units. That's not ideal. But, uh, man, I'd really like to get a capture. Okay, I'm looking closely at what I'm losing. He started at about 30. We're losing men very slowly. I have two detached skirmishers firing into this, which should be to my advantage. Yeah, his cav unit is uh, fighting. I'm losing men very, very slowly. Yeah, there my unit fired. That should degrade him. So my infantry... Started at 30, it's down to 10.20, 10.19. Not terrible. Come on, get a capture. And actually, one of my infantry units is making it, so... Yeah, get up there and fire into this and make somebody surrender. Yes, and we got a capture. Okay. Only got 495 captured, but hopefully that'll give me a thousand or close to it or something. So, okay, a good battle, good numbers, very happy with it.
Um, got the capture. That'll give me something. And um, yeah, 1300, 13 to 1, my Harper's Ferry. The sniper got 1,000 kills. Um, my 24 pound howitzers, again, did not get a whole bunch of kills, but absolutely, you know, j just incredibly valuable for, for breaking the morale of units and getting them to retreat out of the woods. Very happy with the, battle, the way the battle went. Um, yeah, lots of good experience. I'm looking at his units. His units did not, even his artillery didn't do very much. We have another two-star. We're starting to rack up two-stars. Uh, got some 10-pound parrots. I'll take the ord. That'll be fine. Some more Harper's Fairies. And I got almost 1,000 recruits for that. So that's great. So that takes us up to almost 17,000 raw recruits. That was... It was costly. Well, it cost me like 20 or 30 guys to go into the melee. Maybe more, 40 or 50. But got almost 1,000 recruits. He's at 61 to 66. That is not going to be enough for him. He is... He's going to um, suffer minus 15 enemy army size. Don't care. Going in with a big army. Don't care. Yeah, we have 48,000 in the army right now, and we can put more in there. And uh, yeah, we're going for the full wipe for Antietam. And I'll see you there.